This is Kevin, and he lives in London with his parents. It's the 15th of December, and with excitement, he walks home from his last day of school. Traditionally, Kevin spends his Christmas with his family in London. London, the vibrant capital of the United Kingdom, is a city that seamlessly blends history, culture and modernity. Kevin's parents enjoy coming to Piccadilly Circus during Christmas time. But Kevin's favourite place is Winter Wonderland in Hyde Park. They also pay a visit to Leicester Square Christmas Market. London is a great destination for travellers from all around the world. There is always something to do in this enchanting and radiant city. But Susan and Robert made a tough decision this year. They decide to send Kevin to New York to spend Christmas with his grandparents. This will be Kevin's very first time flying on a plane. It's the first time for Kevin to pack his suitcase by himself. He is aware that winter clothes will be a necessity for the trip. His flight is in two days and he is looking forward to travelling alone. He is fully awake and anxious to board the plane. One way or the other, he will have to get some sleep. Susan and Robert drop Kevin off at London Heathrow Airport. The airplane that Kevin will embark on is the double-deck Airbus A380. Kevin is amazed by the cabin and the immense size of the plane. He's traveling alone, but he is not afraid. The cabin crew team will offer Kevin any assistance he needs. The world's largest passenger airplane is ready for pushback. The world's biggest passenger plane is ready to take off at one of the busiest airports in the world. The flight to New York is expected to take approximately eight hours. The cabin is full and passengers are enjoying the entertainment system. The meal service is about to start and one of the cabin crew members comes to ask Kevin if he needs anything. Kevin is a remarkably intelligent and inquisitive young mind. For lunch, he will have the creamy macaroni and cheese, along with a glass of orange juice. The entertainment system offers a wide range of options. Movies, series, games, music, you name it. Kevin will pick something to watch. Perhaps a movie or maybe some live TV.
as he begins to drift off to sleep. Kevin hopes to awaken only when the plane touches down. The British Airways Jumbo has finally landed at JFK. As usual, all passengers stand up even before the doors open. As an unaccompanied minor, Kevin will disembark last. Kevin's grandparents will be at the arrivals hall, eagerly waiting for him. Kevin exits the airplane and strolls down the aerobridge. As the crew members bid farewell to all the passengers, he will be escorted by airport staff. From the baggage claim area, Kevin can see his grandparents awaiting him. As a first time international traveler, he is feeling extremely jet lagged. Elizabeth and Henry can finally reunite with their grandson. Kevin's grandparents live in Battery Park City. The drive from JFK unfolds with iconic landmarks and vibrant cityscapes. Elizabeth and Henry live in an apartment with a view overlooking the Hudson River. On this sunny yet cold day in New York, temperatures are expected to drop with snowfall forecasted for the upcoming days. On that same day, Kevin meets his cousin Fred and they all share a delightful dinner together. For the next few days, Kevin will explore the iconic sights of the Big Apple, including the Central Park, the Statue of Liberty, the Brooklyn Bridge, Times Square, and much more. It's Christmas Eve in New York, and Kevin is about to embark on a festive tour around the city. At night, he will be exploring the city's top Christmas attractions. With his ticket in hands, he will be taking a ride on board the iconic North Pole Express. Enchanted with all the Christmas decorations. He will also visit Diker Heights Holiday Lights, the Rockefeller Center Christmas Tree, the Bank of America Winter Village at Bryant Park, and much more. Kevin's parents successfully secured a flight to New York, ensuring that they can all spend Christmas together as a family. Now, let's explore some intriguing vocabulary from this Christmas story. The word traditionally is an adverb derived from the noun tradition. In the context of the sentence, Kevin traditionally spends his Christmas in London. It suggests that spending Christmas in London is a customary practice for Kevin. The phrase enjoy coming to is a way to express pleasure or satisfaction in the act of arriving or participating in a particular place or event. For example, 
We always enjoy coming to this restaurant because of its cozy atmosphere. In the phrase, Kevin's favorite place, the apostrophe and the letter S indicate possession. This construction is known as the possessive form in English. Here's a breakdown. Kevin's. This indicates that the place is associated with or belongs to Kevin. The apostrophe and S together denote possession or ownership. In this context, it means the favorite place belongs to Kevin. The phrase pay a visit is an idiomatic expression used to convey the action of visiting someone or somewhere. We decided to pay a visit to the historical museum while we were in town. Using pay a visit adds a touch of formality and courtesy to the idea of visiting, making it a respectful and considerate expression. Make a decision. This is the more common and widely accepted phrase in general English usage. It's prevalent in American English, British English, and many other varieties of English. Take a decision. This phrase is used less frequently and is more commonly associated with British English and certain other English varieties. The phrase by himself is used to indicate that an action is performed independently or without assistance from others. For example, the young boy walked to school by himself. Here, by himself indicates that the young boy made the journey to school independently without anyone accompanying him. The phrase looking forward to is an expression used to convey anticipation, eagerness or excitement about a future event or situation. Looking forward to is often followed by a gerund or a noun. Examples I'm looking forward to meeting you. She's looking forward to the weekend. The phrase fully awake is used to describe a state of complete alertness or consciousness. Here are a few examples to illustrate its usage. After a good night's sleep, Robert was fully awake and ready to start the day. In this sentence, fully awake indicates that Robert is not groggy or drowsy, but completely alert and prepared for the day ahead. The caffeine from the coffee helped her become fully awake before the important meeting. Here, the phrase suggests that the person became fully alert and engaged, possibly overcoming any initial tiredness. It takes some people a while to be fully awake in the morning, and that's perfectly normal. In this example, fully awake acknowledges that the process of waking up and reaching a state of complete alertness can vary from person to person. The phrase one way or the other is an idiomatic expression that means something will happen or be resolved, regardless of the specific method or course of action taken. For example, we'll find the solution to this problem one way or the other. In this case, it means that a solution will be found regardless of the specific approach or method used to address the problem. The term drop-off is often associated with providing transportation to a location and leaving the person there. It is commonly used in the context of schools, airports, events or any place where someone is being delivered and left at a specific spot. Susan and Robert drop off Kevin at school. Or, Susan and Robert drop Kevin off at school. The term double deck refers to a structure or vehicle that has two decks or levels, one above the other. Pushback refers to the process in aviation, where an aircraft is pushed backward from a gate or parking position using specialized ground support equipment. The term largest is derived from the word large through a process in English known as derivation. Base word, large. The base word, large, serves as the foundation for the concept of size or magnitude. Derived word, 
largest. By adding the suffix est to large, we derive the word largest. In this context, largest signifies the greatest size or extent within a given category. We can use the same process with the words busiest. That comes from the base word busy. Here are two comparisons between busy and busiest. Busy. The shopping mall is busy on weekends with shoppers and families. Busiest. Yet, it is at its busiest during the holiday season when everyone is looking for gifts. We can use the same process with the word biggest. That comes from the base word big. Here are two comparisons between big and biggest. Big. The elephant is big. Biggest. Among all the animals, the blue whale is the biggest. The sentence, a wide range of options, conveys the idea that there are many diverse choices or possibilities available within a particular category or context. The expression, you name it, is an informal and colloquial way of saying that there are numerous possibilities, options, or examples within a given category. For example, if someone says, we have all kinds of desserts, cakes, pies, cookies, you name it, they are indicating that there is a wide variety of desserts available. The phrase drift off to sleep typically refers to the gradual transition from a state of wakefulness to sleep or inattention. It is commonly used to describe the act of becoming less focused, mentally wandering, or succumbing to drowsiness. After a long day at work, she sat on the couch and gradually began to drift off to sleep. An unaccompanied minor refers to a child who is traveling alone without the presence of a parent, legal guardian, or responsible adult. The term strolls implies a relaxed and unhurried pace suggesting that the person is taking a gentle and enjoyable walk. For example, on Sunday afternoons, she often strolls down the park to enjoy the scenery. He strolls down the historic street, admiring the architecture and taking in the atmosphere. To bid farewell is a phrase that means to say goodbye or take leave of someone in a formal or ceremonious manner. To be escorted means to be accompanied or guided by someone, especially in a protective or formal manner. Jet-lagged. It is a term used to describe the feeling of fatigue, disorientation, and other symptoms that people experience after a long flight across different time zones. Big Apple. It is a term used to refer to New York. Christmas Eve. December 24th, refers to the evening or day before Christmas Day, which is celebrated on December 25th each year. Secure a flight means to successfully book or obtain a seat on an airplane for a specific journey. When someone says they need to secure a flight, they are typically referring to the process of making a reservation or purchasing a ticket for air travel. Thank you. For joining me in today's English lesson. I hope you had fun and had a great learning experience. Wishing you a joyful holiday season filled with warmth, laughter, and the magic of language. Until we meet again, take care and Merry Christmas.